Hey everyone, Matt Pridham here with an iSnipe video tutorial and we're here to dig a little deeper into iSnipe version 3.0. Uh, here we can see the new icon, it's changed a little bit and we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Alright, so iSnipe loads up here, we can have a look at the new home screen. Uh, we've decided to break things up a little bit and put them in their own sections and we think everybody's going to like this a lot. It's going to make uh, changing weapons and changing ammo at the range uh, really quick. Alright, so let's get started and I'll take you through each of the screens and kind of explain how everything works and uh, at the end we'll do a compute and have a look at uh, what we've accomplished. Right off you'll notice that we have a new and load button for each of the sections, round, firearm, range. Let's start with creating a new item for each of these. Let's go ahead and click on new under round to uh, enter in a new bullet. Alright, let me take a moment just to go over each of the items here so that everybody understands what they are and what they should be entering. Uh, ammo name is just going to be something that you recognize your ammo by. You can enter anything you like in here. Next on the list we have caliber and this is going to be the physical diameter of your projectile or the bullet. The next one on the list is bullet weight and this is just the weight of the bullet or the projectile that you're going to be shooting. The next item on the list is ballistic coefficient and simply stated this is a measure of how well a bullet penetrates the air. Uh, each manufacturer will measure their own and they will often include this information uh, either on the ammunition box of ammunition or perhaps on their website. And to date, I'm not aware of any manufacturers who publish anything but G1 ballistic coefficients, um, but other ones are out there. Next item on the list is muzzle velocity and is simply the velocity that the bullet is going when it leaves your muzzle. All right, now that we've gone over the uh, specific items here, let's go ahead and load a projectile from our database and we can go ahead and continue to set up our own uh, custom ammo here. So we'll click load bullet at the top right here. So let's go ahead and load a 308 caliber projectile. Scroll down here to one of my favorites, the Lapua Sinar 155 grain. Snipe prompts us for a muzzle velocity and you can determine this using your powder charts or as we recommend uh, actually measuring in the field using a chronograph. So we can go ahead and enter that. Now you'll notice that the ballistic coefficient has changed from a numerical value to the word lits. Uh, this is because we use data from a book called Applied Ballistics for Long Range Shooting, written by Brian Litz. And in this book, he includes 175 G7 ballistic coefficients that he's calculated himself uh, using a very precise method. And where possible, we load these values, and uh, where, where not possible, we load a G1 value. All right, to save this, we'll click Next at the bottom and then save to save it in our user area. And you'll notice up here we have saved the La Poissinar 155 grain. And that brings us to our next category, firearm. And we'll go ahead and create a new firearm profile now. Alrighty, so again, a uh, firearm description is uh, just something that uh, you refer to your gun as, something that's easy to remember. Um, let's go ahead and enter REM 700. Uh, the next item, zero distance. Uh, this is the distance at which your gun is currently zeroed. So you put your, your scope on the target and pull the trigger. Uh, what distance does that hit uh, right on bullseye? Uh, for a lot of people, they'll uh, zero their hunting rifles at 100 yards, but uh, we can go ahead and, and change this to any distance we like. Next item on the list is sight height. This is the measurement from the center of your sight or scope to the center of your bore. There are several ways to go about measuring this. 
but uh, you can do a quick Google search and you'll be on your way. All right, and the next two items, elevation and wind click value. These are simply the click values of your scope. Uh, some of the higher end st scopes offer um, a different value for elevation than they do for wind. Say quarter minute for um, elevation and eighth of a minute for wind. Um, so we can go ahead and click the little blue arrow next to uh, elevation click value. And that brings us to our list of values. Uh, we have a bunch of pre-canned values, but you can also go to the end here and enter an arbitrary value if you've uh, gone ahead and actually measured your clicks. And in this case, we'll stick with a quarter minute. Of course, you can also click in any one of these boxes and, and enter uh, another value if you like. And we'll go ahead and click Next. And this is a rifle, and I'll save it here but uh, we could go over to pistols if it were a pistol. Alrighty, so we have our Lapua round and our firearm, in this case a Remington 700, uh, all loaded up. The last thing we need to do is uh, set up our range and um, we'll have a quick look at our daily variables and we'll be on our way. All right, so again, range name is um, just something you're comfortable with uh, and, and that you will remember. I'll go ahead and enter my local range here. Angle to target is simply the angle at which your gun is pointed in order to uh, actually shoot at your target. Uh, if you're at a shooting range, this will likely be very close to zero, uh, but if you're out uh, hunting or out in, out in the backwoods, you may be shooting up and down a hill. So you can go ahead and either just enter this value if, if you happen to know it, or we can click the blue button next to it, and uh, this will load up our angle to target screen. And it gives us some quick instructions here. We'll click OK, and uh, we'll unhold this value, and uh, we just set it on our firearm, aim down at the target, and if we just let it sit for a few moments, you'll notice the hold button came on all on its own. This is so you don't have to be watching the screen of your phone and trying to click a button while it's sitting on top of your rifle. Uh, just get it aimed, put the iPhone on there, let it sit still for a few minutes, or a few seconds, sorry, and uh, it will auto hold that value. In this case, looks like we're about two degrees. So we'll go ahead and click back. The next item on our list is max range. This is the maximum range that we're going to compute out to. Um, you can set this to as high as you like, though our particular engine is set up so that it will only compute out to the maximum usable range for that projectile. Now you might be wondering how we go about determining that. What we do is we measure the speed of the bullet and the drop of the bullet and when the bullet is falling to the ground faster than it's moving forward, we call that its maximum usable range. Um, but go ahead and set this to any value you like. Just be aware that uh, if you set it to a million, <laughs> it will stop at uh, what we call the maximum usable range for each projectile. Next on the list is step size, and this is simply the number of yards between each readout. Uh, so we've said uh, 2,000 yards, so what it will do is start at 0, and then 10, and then 20, and then 30, and then 40 yards, so on and so forth, all the way out to 2,000 yards. Uh, we can change this to whatever we like. Um, if you want to set it to just one yard, that's fine. Um, it just may take a few extra moments to compute that, as that's 2,000 data points instead of 200. So let's go ahead and leave this at, at 10 yards. And we'll go ahead and um, save this in our ranges.